Um, let's move on. Sheamus promo. Best promo of the night. Amazing. Sheamus for MVP. Yeah, the way Sheamus laughs is pretty much how I laugh at the general populace. So that's something we have in common. Um, yeah, I feel like you, me, and Sheamus would really get along right now. Dude, we would troll everyone. We would. Uh, Toss it Adam Cole. Oh my god, don't even tease me. Johnny Rudo. Uh, dude. Five men just just destroying everyone. Five men, one planet, one dynasty. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. But yeah, Seamus is pretty much just like, who do I want to win? Randy Borton or that skunk Zeth Rollins? And then he made a Goonies reference, which I think facilitated... Dude, that's so funny. I literally didn't understand a single word that he said in that Goonies line. And I laughed anyway, because just his delivery is just so good. I never knew Seamus could laugh like that. That laugh is going to haunt my dreams tonight. I'm going to try and show up all the time. And it's going to be like, I'm going to insert my worst fears in life, and that laugh is going to be the soundtrack. It's like, John, you failed the test. Insert Seamus laugh. I love, too, that like, he was laughing hysterically, and Judge is just like, Seamus? Like, like a little kid that just watched their mother get possessed by a demon. Like, mommy! And Seamus is just like, Jojo. I wasn't done laughing. <laughs> I, I love that too. Cause he snaps back to reality and he just looks at her like, this is the first time in my career I'm showing personality and you're pissing on it. Like I wasn't done. <laughs> it, really and, too. it really is. And yeah, like I want, like, I'm sorry. I may be committing blasphemy here, but I've got to call it, man. I've got to call it. Seamus laugh better than Rollins laugh. And I love that Rollins cackle, but Ooh, okay. Well, what about damn. Curtis Axel? Oh, <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> I can't, it's, the laugh, it's the laugh Olympics, man. We got to find out who's the best. <laughs> you've got to work on your imitation of Seamus's laugh. Cause you've already perfected Axel. And then we got to have a contest using your voice and then I'll be able to decide. Well, what about the Rollins cackle? Well, the wrong, I mean, you've perfected that, too, but I've already kind of ruled that out, so it's a move Oh, point. so that's that's getting bronze. We just need to determine silver and gold. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, man. Up next, uh, oh, and Seamus did tease cashing in tonight. Right. Up next was our main event, though, Orton Rollins, WWE Championship of the World. And this, uh, this was a, a fun match. Orton looked like he was going to get the win, and then, as expected, Seamus... Being the heel that he is, cost Orton the match. Yeah, pulls him out, takes him out. I agree with you. It was a very fun match that preceded all the shenanigans, but you and I both knew how it was going to go down. Actually, Can I just say, was... though, just to emphasize how much of a heel Sheamus is, do you remember the Machine Gun Kelly concert? Yeah, were we talking about the one that Kevin Owens interrupted? Yeah, well, he didn't interrupt it, and that's what I was actually getting ready to talk about. He didn't interrupt the concert. He let the concert finish. And then he attacked Machine Gun Kelly. That's exactly like what Sheamus did tonight. He's such a heel. He let Randy Orton pin Cesaro and then cost him the title. <laughs> yeah, because if you remember our conversation earlier, which I was just getting ready to say this, but I love how you introduced it even better. I thought that Sheamus was going to uh, run in during the triple threat and cost Orton, you know, a chance at Rollins when he was getting ready to get the pin. And maybe that, that would have made the IWC happy because then it might have let Cesaro win. And even if it would have been Cesaro, it would have been Kevin Owens, two IWC favorites. But no, Sheamus is just like, you know, Orton's not going to win the title. I'm not going to let him win the title. Might as well just dangle him along as long as possible and let everyone else hate me even more for it. Absolutely. You know, I, I love that. I, absolutely... I love it. I wonder if he has conversations exactly like what you described to himself in the locker room. He definitely does. It's like I could really piss in his cornflakes right now, but you know what's even better? Pissing in everybody else's cornflakes first. It's Uh, getting just those last few drops in Orton's cornflakes as well. (laughs) So then as he tosses Orton out, he comes in, and at first I thought he was going to Oh, by the way, can I just say I now am longing for Seamus to team up with the kingdom. And just heal it up on everybody. Oh, yes. Oh, that'd be so great. Just to see Adam Cole finally have one of those sexy... No, 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 no. Adam Cole's now. turning face. I'm talking about Taven, Bennett, and Maria. Yeah, I know. I know. But then Adam Cole just sees how far the kingdom has sunk, and he just does a sexy cry because he's babyface and he has feelings now. So. <laughs> and then he teams up with Kyle O'Reilly, and they take everyone's heads off. Yeah, future shock for the win. Yeah. With Adam Cole doing all the work, of course, because Kyle O'Reilly, eh, 
I want to compare even, to Adam Cole. Even if Kyle O'Reilly gets offense, it's because Adam Cole allowed him to. Exactly. You get it. You get it. You and Bray Wyatt, man, who actually did answer that he would answer Adam Cole's email. So good on you, man. Good on you. Yeah. But, uh... What else? Why are you slacking? Exactly. What the hell is your problem? I mean, either you still have an AIM account, or you just don't care. Either way, shame on you. Um, but I'm sure that if somebody still has an AIM account, they don't care. <laughs> to be honest, I actually still have an AIM account. Wow! Oh, <laughs> John! I, yeah, I was doing some hardcore projecting there, but this isn't about me. Uh, Sheamus lays out Rollins with a bro kick, and then I love how he's pretty much shoving the briefcase into the referee's chest, probably yeah, gave him up. Ref, I'm cashing in! Are you? Yes, I'm cashing in. Okay. Yeah, ref, I'm cashing in. Okay, fine. I'm cashing. RKO. <laughs> yeah, like the ref didn't do his damn job. He should have been like, okay, Sheamus, okay. I hate that. And this is the one thing I, I hate about like the I feel like the ref is just like, okay, Sheamus, you're going to need to slow down. I can't understand a word you're saying right now. Your accent's too thick. I, You know, and that would be more justifiable because I hate with the money in the bank. It's supposed to be any time, any place, but these referees always have to show competition. Wait, I have to check on Seth to see sure he could compete. Who cares if he can compete? It's my money in the bank. Do as you're told. Yeah. Jesus. And, and I love, too, that, like, sometimes, every now and then, they'll allow a cash-in on a down opponent. And then every uh, now and then, it's like, no, 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 no. We have to wait until he's up for you to cash in. Like, make up your mind. It's like, way to be transparent about the fact that you have ulterior motives. And then Orton comes in, drops him with an RKO, to your point. And Randy Orton poses to close the show. I feel like Sheamus was robbed here. I feel like Sheamus was the real victim here. Now, I know people are going to be like, but what about Orton? He had the match one beforehand. That, that doesn't matter, you know? And what matters is that a cash-in got thwarted. And I just can't wait for Sheamus to be WWE a World Champion. A cash-in got thwarted by a referee. <laughs> exactly. Worst referee ever. Brian Maddox can now sleep at night. Well, Brad Maddox can sleep at night, and I kind of feel like maybe I'm not quite as angry as Armstrong at Armstrong anymore either. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Up next. Actually, there is no up next. That was our main event. So if you want to move right. on, John. Yeah, next segment. High spots and low shots. My low shots, easy. Sheamus. Why? You know, has this brilliant plan. Did he lose just, a match? No, but he did. He cut an amazing promo. He did. Then how is he your low shot? Because he was this close to being WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Did he and his lose attempt his got money thwarted. in the bank contract? No, but his attempt got thwarted. Okay. But he still has the contract. But everything was there for him. We don't know if he's going to be another Sandow. We don't know that. And the table was Dude, set. Sandow cashed in on a prone Cena. And failed. What I'm That's saying. That's what is, I'm saying, though, is like. I don't, I don't understand your logic here. I don't. Well, we don't know if Sheamus is going to fail to cash in. So when it seemed like success was a guarantee. Well, it seemed like got, success was a guarantee for Sandow, too. <laughs> yeah, but it was Cena, though. This was Seth Rollins. Uh, so are Lord. you saying that you think that this was Sheamus' last opportunity to cash in before Cena wins the title? <sighs> Potentially, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But then a referee, you can't even blame Randy Orton, because if I was Randy Orton, I would have had the exact same retort. But the referee, he really screwed up. So Sheamus is my low shot. Well, the referee is my honorary low shot, because suck less at your job. He is pretty terrible at his job, though. Yeah. So um, my low shot's King Barrett, and I don't think that really even requires an explanation. You're right, it doesn't. Moving on, high spot, I'm going to say that my high spot... Well, you know what? It's Seth Rollins. Because uh, he retained and his opponents canceled each other out to allow him to do so. <laughs> exactly. And oh. if you... Yeah, so that was just perfect by Seth Rollins there. Great night for him. Still the champion. Still don't know if John Cena will answer that challenge, but uh, if he does, I'm sure he'll ca cackle all the way to the bank regardless. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> see if you can guess who my high spot is, John. Let me see here. The big guy. Wow. Well, yeah, I'd agree with that. Had a great return segment. The crowd was hot and warm. And something that I wanted to mention when we were talking about that segment, Ryback, a very intelligent baby face, milking the atmosphere, does the yes chant with Daniel Bryan. So, and then great transitions fan. it into a feed me more chant. Because Ryback's just that good. He is. All right, He's well. a logical mastermind, and you didn't even realize it. I know, right? Well, with that said... 
Uh, let's move on to our next segment, Raw Request. Um, let me see here. What is my Raw Request going to be? Uh, you know what? My Raw Request is going to be find something for Rusev to do at SummerSlam. Because if Dolph's going to be back after SummerSlam, unless they're teasing that, I'm maybe that's what you're right now. Gonna... Well, actually, you know what? I was going to say maybe they could do like an intergender match, him and uh, Summer versus Ziggler and Lana. But Lana said that Ziggler wouldn't be back until after SummerSlam, so I don't think that's a thing. Yeah, I mean, I would want us to find something for Rusev to do. I feel Rusev like versus Mark Henry 3. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that'll be the intergender match, though, because he tried to help Lana, but he couldn't. So maybe while Ziggler's out, Mark Henry steps up to the plate, and that's our he intergender tried match. To help Lana. Well, he tried to get back in the ring to stop, you know, Lana and Boy, but then Rusev he went to the did? outside and he cut. Yeah, he did. And then Rusev cut him off at the pass. Oh, I didn't see that. That's cool. Yeah, you could you could tell that Mark Henry was gesturing to try and get back in the ring to do something. But the he couldn't. return of sexual chocolate. Oh my god! But yeah, even if it's that, look, I mean, my fanfare for Rusev has really grown. Uh, this past month, you know, with his whole performance in the triple threat, his work now that he's back from injury and this whole angle, Rusev's a hot prospect. And I think he's one of my favorites on the roster right now. So I'd really love to see him get something to do at SummerSlam. So that's my raw request. I mean, we got, you know, next week is the go home show, Ashton or no. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. So step out to the plate here. Get something for him to do. Okay. Right. My, uh, my raw request I'm going to keep it really simple. Don't be so scared of not having top stars on every single show. Because tonight, right. tonight we had no Taker, we had no Lesnar, we had no Cena. And guess what, John? What? The show wasn't horrible. It wasn't. It was actually pretty stretch. pretty enjoyable, and it probably had a really good rating, thanks in part to Stephen Amell. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, just learn how to improvise. Injuries are going to happen or, or schedules are going to happen. Have faith in your roster. I, I completely co-sign on your raw request. You know, don't be sweating bullets. Get creative with it. Show some ingenuity. And I think they did tonight, utilizing once again the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Open Challenge, the utilization of Stephen Amell the way they did. Like, everything seemed to be on point when they needed it to be. So uh, kudos to them. And I completely agree with your raw request. All right. Which only leaves one segment left. What's that, John? Do you want to fill me in? 30-second hot seat. So what do you oh. got for me this week? I mean, I was going to have our next segment be, you know, candy and sunshine. But since you oh, said it, we okay. can well, no, can we? No, can we, can, can we do that? Can we still do no, that? I no, mean, I mean, you, you said 30-second hot seat, so I guess that's what we're doing. <sighs> Damn it. All right, what do you got for me this week? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, let's just do this. Who uh, who do you think? No, I don't want to do who do you think is going to win a match because we're going to be doing preview predictions next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Might even want to do it Friday just because of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn being a thing. Uh, so I am going to say, uh, yeah, let's, you know what? Let's turn your little raw request on its head. What do you think they should do with Rusev for SummerSlam? You have 30 seconds, and I'm going to say that your time starts right now. Honestly, if I had my choice with Rusev, Ziggler would be back and we'd get this intergender matchup out of the way. But that's but not going to happen. But that's not going to happen. I'd love to see him stick his nose again and Owens and Cesaro's business. Maybe we raise the stakes. Winner becomes number one contender for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship for Night of Champions. And we get a new program for Cena. But that's not really realistic either because of Rollins. So I guess the best recourse is the intergender matchup. Rusev and Summer Rae versus Lana and Mark Henry. Okay, and you do yeah. that in 29 seconds, so that's actually really impressive considering all the options we went through. Exactly. I think, you're, I think I'm getting better at these finally. Yeah. So uh, You're starting to get a better understanding of how long 30 seconds is. I know, right? I can tell time finally, but anyway. <laughs> is, uh, is there anything else you want to say about this Raw, brother? No, it was a, it was a relatively enjoyable show. Like I said, I, I will say 7.5. 7.5 out of 10. It was a solid, just a straight C. Not a failure, not an amazing show. It was par for the course on the good side, not on the par for the course because this show sucked kind of thing. Just like, yeah, solid raw. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. And with that said, guys, this has been raw. This has been twit. Wow. The best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I'm John. That's my cohort and commentary, Ashton. Guys, 
Be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube. I want to hear a conversation down there. What do you think about Sheamus or Zorton? Do you feel like, you know, maybe this matchup would be better because they have more malice given the old WWE World WWE Championship debacle that went down tonight? What do you think Rusev should do at SummerSlam? Maybe you can come up with a better idea than I did. What did you think about Stephen Amell? Did he kind of inspire you to order SummerSlam or subscribe to the network? Uh, be sure to take the conversation over to Puitov, an amazing pro wrestling group. Remember, for special events like NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and SummerSlam, we do Puitov predictions where all the gold is on the line. Uh, and we got some great matches lined up, so you may want to be a part of that. It's a really fun community. But I get it. If you're feeling like I'm pressuring you, like, stop pressuring me, John. God, I want to join communities. That's fine. Ashton has created a TwitWow subreddit where you can find all of our TwitWow content and also... You're empowered with the ability to create threads on that Reddit related to any pro wrestling topic that you can post to either Ashton or myself, and we'd be more than happy to engage you in that conversation. And guys, we will see you tomorrow for day 15 of the G1 Climax, where if I'm not mistaken, Ashton, we are going to get Togi Makabe versus uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Is that correct? Sure is. Absolutely. So, guys, that's going to be a great G1 Climax match. And I'll tell you what, guys, until then, just hang tight. we got a lot of great content coming for you this week. And until then, tune in and peace out.